Hey there, Boots Owen here. This is a hot point condenser dryer, an 8kg, so pretty big by my standards. It's a H2D81WUK, that's the model. Hot point, uh, there's a end code and a serial number there. Maybe that helps people identify the year. It's a pretty standard unit. Water drawer on top, with a kind of a carrying handle grip. There was water in it when I got it. Plastic door with a double skin. Dryer with some lint in it, as it happens. Might have to make a separate video about cleaning that. It's got moisture in it, which is peculiar. I think that's from being on its side, but I don't know. Down here, it doesn't really want to open because it's resting on the front lip. I spotted when I went to check this that it's got some damage. I'll show you that hopefully. So in there, if you can see, the plastic has popped. But I'm also not sure that that's an issue because it looks like it takes its air from here, underneath, and just lets it go in there through the fan. Maybe also in through here. And then up the heater at the back, I presume, into the drum, then down the front into here, into here, and then through the condenser into the back again, and, and then into some kind of an infinite reduce, reducing loop, i guessing, I don't know. So I don't know if that's actually an issue. I'll give this a clean out. I don't think it is now that I, like if, there's a, if there's a gap there, it doesn't really matter if there's a gap there because it's all interconnected. So to speak, just give that a bit of a wipe for my own satisfaction. So I should pop down that cracked bit, but uh, that's, this is looking up, you know. It's looking up, it's positive. So can I smash that back in somehow? Mm. I've got a rubber mallet. Look at my swing on it. I'm just going to reach under it with one hand, push up and push down. And that seems to be on it actually. Push up and push down. Break it. It's quite thin plastic. So, what happened here, I think, was. Dear me, come on. There's a bit of dust in the back there. It looks it looks like mold, but it's not. It's just dust, I think. So there's a hole missing in it, which I really don't think matters much. It won't be ideal, but you could just put a piece of tape over the bottom of it, or on, underneath. I've got it pretty flat there now. It's uh, smooth. What happened was it was thrown into a skip. That's where I got it from. And they clearly just trashed it when they did that. There's a drain hole here. And I think there's a hose pipe that comes underneath. Yeah, that black hose pipe there comes from that drain at the front, going presumably to a pump at the back. So that's, uh, that's a good feature, I suppose. In here, there's a bit of dusty snots. It's not too bad. Uh, it's not bad at all because I can see light. You can't because you've got your flash on. But I can see light through all of those ducts, so that's good. Offer this back up, slide it in, clip it shut. Yeah, I might make a separate video about cleaning this thing. Snap that up. It's got a magnet here. Actually, they're useful if it doesn't work. Little magnet on each side and there must be a corresponding... Oh, it sticks to a screw. That's clever. That's, I haven't seen that feature before. That's good. They could do that. They could do that on the front of washing machines. It has this piece of black tape on it, which is holding up this rubber seal. And I'm not sure if that's something to do with airflow and having it somewhere. I don't know. Doesn't really matter, does it? Now let's have a look around the back. So because it was damp inside, whenever I got it last week, I thought I'd take off the back cover and just check that this element is okay, because this is the bit that tends to be gone on them. But this looks really spotless. There is nothing. In there and if they get damp you see those 
I think they're like some kind of a mica cardboard thing that holds the element apart. If they get damp, that can fall apart and all, but it all looks okay. It looks pretty good. The stats on top look okay. Bit of dust in the side, but like really nothing. No big gobs of snotty something at the bottom. Fan turns. Uh, if I demonstrate that. Fan turns and then the drum turns with it. You can see that just slowly going around like a bit of a, it would make an excellent cheese grater. Bearing's not worn, it's not hanging or anything like that. So I'll put these screws in and the shroud back on and we will get it cracking. Don't know if you can hear that. The timer is ticking. Hot and cold. For a condenser, actually, I'm surprised. This is a very rudimentary machine. It's very rudimentary. It only has a timer and a hot and cold and a play button. This is the ideal machine for me. If this works, um, granted I'm into heat pumps now and gas tumble dryers, but I prefer a machine with no electronics. This has no electronics, this is just on. There's a there's a kind of an actuate button, which I presume has some kind of a starter relay going on or something like that. Um, 20 minutes. Go. You can feel air moving there. Can't tell if it's going in or coming out. Bump, bump, bump. That bump, bump, bump sounds to me, sounds like it's got the same issue that I had on that candy heat pump dryer where there's damage, there's two spots of damage to the rim and the ball bearings or the roller bearings, it's like skateboard wheels that support the, um, the drum on the front lip. Sounds like there's damage there and it's hitting it. And it's because there's bump, 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 so at one point, there's the first bump hitting the first bearing, then there's both bumps hitting both bearings, and then there's the third, and that's a transit issue thing where it's been dropped in transit, I think. Ah, made in Britain, I should have spotted that. You've probably spotted that straight away. Um, I suspect that's very rare these days. I wonder where it was made. What I'm gonna do is take the top off it and have a look. I'll give it, I'll give it five minutes to heat up and I'll come back in a few minutes. In is hotter than out by the looks of things. So I'll, well, I'll put it on the out first. We'll check that that element, and then we'll put it on the in in a bit and see if it's even hotter still. So it's been on not even five minutes because that's still at twenty. I just got the sense I can put my hand in and it feels warm. So I'm gonna put it on higher, the higher setting. I think in more is higher. And I'll check it again in three or five minutes and see if it's even hotter. That's really all there is to check. I have noticed there's a light here for too much water being in it. That's cool. It's very clean. It came out, it was in a skip outside a sports training place where they also had a washing machine. The washing machine is also a hot point. So these are a side by side affair. With the door is opening. So you put it from the left and the washing machine into the dryer on the right. Nice setup, nice and clean. I'll post videos of that machine as well. But the washing machine's broken, and when I got into it, the door interlock has definitely had a lot of heat on it because it's melted. Hasn't been on fire, but it's overheated for sure. So that's not cool. So the exhausted air is coming out the bottom here on the left, and it's slightly warm. I didn't think to check that. And I think this is where the air is getting sucked in I can feel it cold over my hand, so it's not it's not been warmed yet. Give it another three minutes or so. So it's moved on a little bit. I would say it's hotter. It smells like laundry, if that's a thing. It's got dust on it. No big deal. Can't fill with water because it's running dry. I'm gonna leave it run. So I guess for the last 10 minutes there, it runs on a fan only, which is how these things go. You can hear a buzz whenever you press that um, play button. So I presume that's a capacitor K 
kicking in to get the machine going. I think that's how it would be. Yeah, looks good. Free dryer, slightly damaged. Or tape would fix it. I don't know what else there is to check about this. It's looking good to me. I'm gonna take the top off and just have a look at that rim. That's what I'm gonna do once. I'll give it the 10 minutes and uh, it'll heat up the garage a little bit for me. <laughs> So I've taken the screws out, let's see if I'm right, if I can get it off with one hand. So I've taken the screws out of the back, two screws slid the top back, I think you have to angle it up a bit as well. It's got a piece of like tin foil plastic here, it feels plasticky but, it feels plasticky but it looks like tin foil. Now I can't see what I'm talking about here. So I'm just looking along this strip here any signs of damage. Looks like there's a dent in it there. I don't see any cracking though, but you can see the wobble in the reflection. It looks like another one up here. Something there. And then another one there. Maybe that's the same, one of the same ones. Yeah, I've seen that rusty bit. So I'd say that's all it is. It doesn't look cracked or damaged, so that's positive. I look in here, there's a big mechanical timer. There's a neon for that fill light with a big reflector or a refractor there to get the light up. Brass shaft on that uh, timer. A little motor on the back of it. Button for high-low. Capacitor inside. It, there's no dust in here. This is spotless. It's got razor sharp edges. Yikes. That's hot point for you. Made in... Made in the UK. Right. It's a good machine as far as I'm concerned. If you're worried about it or if you've got any questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. See you later. Thanks for watching. See you later.